What's going on, everyone? This is Vince with vshred.com, back with Dr. Zaki Afsol to wrap up this physical therapy six-part Fix Your Body series. And today, we are talking about ankle pain. So if you are dealing with ankle pain, then this is the video for you. I'ma keep on going up till the lights go down. All right, like I said, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about ankle pain. This is the last part of our six part series with Dr. Zaki Afzal. We've basically worked down the entire body. We've talked about neck pain, we've talked about shoulder pain, talked about low back pain, hip pain, knee pain. Now we're finishing off with ankle pain. So if you haven't checked out any of those other videos, make sure that you're going back and checking those out if you're dealing with any issues in those areas. The videos have been off the charts. You guys have been loving him. He's been incredible. And so today we're going to wrap it up with some ankle stuff. So um, this is Dr. Zachy Assel. If you haven't watched any of these videos, he has his doctorate in physical therapy. He is an absolute G in this world. He's the guy that I go to whenever I have any types of issues and he gets me right every single time. He works with professional athletes, works with all different types of people. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you to the V-Shirt community for having me back for the six-part series. Like Vince said, my name is Dr. Zach Yavzel, performance physical therapist, work with active adults and athletes, and just getting you moving the way you want and unlocking and kind of even uh, kind of debunking a lot of myths that yes. are out there in the fitness world about your body and giving you hopefully information you can utilize today. And today we're going to be talking about the ankle. All right, so, and by the way, if you guys are wanting to check out any of Dr. Zaki's stuff, check out his clinic, maybe hit him up. I'll put all his info down in the description below, or if you wanna check him out on Instagram, it's at OptimizePTP. Or if you're wanting help with not physical therapy, just like physical therapy, you need personalized help. It's the same thing with getting in shape. If you are looking to build muscle or lose a bunch of weight or cut fat while staying the same weight, you have to have a specific approach to do that. So there's specific net macros you need, specific types of resistance training, cardio, uh, diet in general, whether it's carb cycling or flex dieting or maybe you wanna do keto, you wanna do fasting. You gotta have a plan that's right for you and your lifestyle. If you want help with figuring that out, I'll put a link uh, to our free body type quiz down in the description below. It's a great place for anybody to start. But um, now getting into this video. So when someone comes to your clinic with ankle pain, where do you start? So the first thing we do is figure out, was there a mechanism of injury? Did they twist their ankle? Did they step in a pothole? Did they, were they in a car accident? So things like that will definitely tell us, okay, where do we start, right? Uh, we have a couple rules that if, if they come in and they can't weight bear, they have certain tenderness in a couple parts of the ankle, we wanna make sure they get an x-ray, make sure there's no fractures or anything like that. So that's one of the first things we start with. Now, if you just have stiff ankles or ankle pain, ankle pain generally isn't too common, but as we're gonna talk about in this video, not having ankles that move well can put you in predicaments or positions that may not be the best for other parts of your body. Cause, basically causing a pain in other joints, other areas of your body because of your ankles. Mm -hmm. So the big thing with the ankles is, especially when you're working on movements that uh, you're doing in the gym, whether it's squatting, lunging, uh, you wanna make sure you have what we call ankle dorsiflexion. So that means how far past my, uh, my toes can my knee kind of go. So you see the angle between my foot and my shin is decreasing and closing down, that's a motion we need because it's a motion we use every single day, whether we're climbing stairs, getting out of our car, or we're doing squatting, lunging, or whatever we're doing, right? So we wanna make sure we have that motion, and it's generally the most limited motion that I see in the clinic when people come in. And I think that's one of the things that we did when I first came in. Absolutely. So what we're gonna talk about here is what are the one of the main limitations we find in the foot and ankle that limits the ankle dorsiflexion? Because I'm sure some people have already known that they're limited there, uh, but they've been working on calf stretching, they've been working on maybe some mobilizations they've seen online, and it just isn't getting the results they want. So this is something that we is, uh, is commonly overlooked in terms of getting that motion back. Okay. So the first thing we wanna to do to check out your ankle mobility is we wanna do what we call the knee to wall test. So here we're gonna use these two boxes and they're gonna act as our wall. At home, you can use any kind of wall that you have a little bit of room to half kneel in front of. So that means one knee down, one foot forward. So we're gonna take our shoes off for this just to make sure we have a good clean assessment. And what Vince is gonna do is gonna put one foot forward. We're gonna have him do his left side. And generally we're gonna have him take his four fingers on his hand and put them right here between the wall and between his toe. That's a good starting spot to kind of start with in order to see does he have good ankle mobility. And from here, what we want is we want to see can he keep his heel down and 
pressure on the foot evenly distributed while he tries to take this knee and touch it to the wall. So we gotta see, can he get that knee to the wall? And he passes this test. So what a failed test would look like is if he tries to push past, either it'll stop right there or he'll touch the wall, but his heel's coming up. So that means you're not, you don't have enough motion to so I, close so his So I guess ankle. to show that, bring my knee back here. Yeah. I can almost get there, but yeah. see my heel coming up heel's quite a bit? That's because I don't have the, which I don't think, I don't know if you're supposed to have that kind of mobility, <laughs> no, no. but if you don't have the mobility to do this, you're lacking mobility. Yes. So four, four fingers is generally a good uh, place to start to see do you have prerequisite mobility to get that knee past the toe during squats, during lunges, and other movements that you might do throughout your day. So say somebody has a little bit of limitation. Now, the reason why a lot of those limitations can occur is the foot. So a lot of people will work on calf stretching. They'll work on ankle mobility drills that they've seen, where, which is not a bad thing. It's, it's an okay thing to kind of add in where you'll work on just driving the knee past the toe and things like that. But as his tibia, which is his shin bone here, crosses past his foot, there has to be a, a room for clearance, right? There has to be physical space for that tibia to move forward. If the middle of the foot here doesn't get out of the way, then it's going to be hard for that shin to kind of cross. So we're going to here switch feet for us so we can see the inside arch of your foot. So what we want to see here is if we are always in that high arch position, meaning you have this high arch all the time and you have an inability to collapse this arch down, then what happens is, so if he keeps that high arch position, he's going to try to drive that knee past the toe while that keeps up. That's all he's got. And if we draw a straight line, he's just just at his toe, right? Now, if he lets that collapse down, that, that arch kind of collapse down and then goes forward, oh. he's got way more motion, right? So if you've always been taught high arches are great, flat feet are bad, that's not necessarily true. You need to be able to do both. There's and, and that's something that I've, I heard a lot when I was first getting into fitness and I think a lot of people think is like, when you get into a squat, they're like, drive your knees outward, make sure that your, your arches are up, make sure that you're throwing your butt back, when in reality, all those are kind of not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's gonna be different squat variations for everybody, but in general, you're gonna want your foot in a position that allows that knee to track forward. If that high arch doesn't allow it, you need mobility in the middle of the foot in order for that to happen. So an easy way to get that moving, there's a quick uh, exercise that you can do to kind of get that moving, right? So the big thing with when you're doing anything where you're applying force to the ground, if you're ball the big toe, doesn't stay down, you've lost all ability to produce force. Whether that's running, pushing off the ground, squatting. If you see your ball, the big toe coming off the ground, either rolling out this way, or you're, you're kind of rolling forward, where your heel's coming up, you're losing ability to produce force. So what you want, instead of thinking of a high arch position, try to feel the ball, the big toe, onto the ground when you're doing those exercises that you're pressing, like either a leg press, lunge, or a squat. Right? So you do that and you still can't move forward. Maybe it's time to get this midfoot a little more mobile. So an easy way to do that is Vince is going to stand up on the front of the table here for me. Stand. Yeah, oh, right here in the front of the table. And you're going to uh, face me this way. So what we want to do is we want to make sure the biggest uh, or the most uh, movement occurring in his foot is occurring at the midfoot. For that to happen, we have to block the rest of the foot a little bit. So I'm gonna have him take his heel on his right side, and I'm gonna have him put it right on top of the ball of the big toe on this side. So do the other side so they can see your arch a little bit better. So right here, okay? And now this foot is there to kind of just make sure that ball of the big toe stays planted. Now what we want him to do is we want him to bend his knee slightly on this side, keep it bent, and then at this time, I'm gonna have him push his knee outwards as far as he can. So do you, do you see his foot kind of arching up here? That's full supination, arch position of the foot. Now when he drives it inwards, he's getting full pronation, that flat foot position. So we want him to move in and out of those positions and getting that midfoot moving. And what you can see is it kind of shows you the positions, how important the foot is in terms of positioning of your hip, right? So if you face the camera and do it again, Vince, if you look this way, see the different positions his knees can kind of get into because his foot is more mobile. If his foot doesn't have the ability to keep that big toe down while he moves in and out of these positions, he's limited the ability for his hips to get in the positions he wants to, right? So say he's running and he wants to change direction. If he wants to change direction and, and run, we have to make sure the big toe is pushing through the ground and his knees have to be able to be able to point in the direction that he wants to change direction to. And if he can't do it because of his foot, it doesn't matter how strong and how mobile his hips are because the feet don't let him express that. So, Great exercise. We want to do about 15 reps each time we do it. 
in two sets. And you can do this multiple times a day. And you should see in that need wall test if you reassess improvement in your ability to get that knee closer to the wall while your heel stays down. And we'd show you the results, but I already have great mobility. <laughs> okay, so, cool. So that's, that's where they start. Yes. So what comes after that? So after that, now that we know that this ankle is much more mobile because of the fact that that foot is moving, now we have to talk about how we maintain this ankle mobility, right? Our body's always in a state of if you don't use it, you lose it, right? Now, it's not a really quick state where if I don't use my ankles in one day, I'm gonna lose all mobility, but over time, we wanna make sure we use those. So a great way to maintain the ability for your ankles to bend the dorsiflexion is doing full range of motion calf raises, right? When your feet are hanging off, your heels are hanging off the edge of a step or something, and you're dropping down and back up. So most people know how to do calf raises, so I don't think a demo is necessary. Okay. But what I wanna show you is what we call rhythm squats. One of my favorite ways to not only work on the ability for you to maintain your ankle mobility, but also start working that ability for your knees to go over your toes and help those knees get a little stronger as well. So it's real simple. If you face me this way, you're gonna get your feet right underneath your uh, hips. And all you're gonna do is you can add a little bit of weight. Weight's not too important with this, but all you wanna work on is using just the knees, letting them go past the toes and kind of bouncing out of that position. So we're just getting down to the bottom and bouncing out. So all we're doing is like kind of like almost like a rhythmic, rhythmic kind of bounce in and out in and out. So we want to make as less uh, motion with our hips as possible. So we're not sitting back at all. We're just completely, completely upright, up and down in that position. And as I feel, as I do this, I, f I feel every single time I go down, there's a little bit of a stretch. Yes. So I'm assuming that's what you should feel. Every time. Absolutely. You should feel a stretch in the back of the calf area, back of the ankle. And then what this does, like I said, it prepares his knees to be able to land, to be able to run, to be able to do other things where the knees have to go past the toes. So it's a really great exercise to add in after you've worked on getting the ankle open to maintain that motion. So the first forward. one gets the ankle open. Mm -hmm. This is a great progression after that. Yes, absolutely. Okay. After it and then even immediately after it to maintain the improvement that you've already just gotten. Okay, so it's almost like a step one, step two. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so what was the third thing that you recommend? So third thing we recommend is now we take a look at why it's so important, right? I think having an understanding of your body is probably one of the most important things you can do for your overall health. So now let's take a look at what a limited ankle looks like when it comes to squatting. So we're gonna need a bench or, uh, or a box to kind of show this. So now we brought in a bench. Um, the study that they did to show how different kind of squatting can put different stresses on your body actually was done very similarly to this. So what Vince is gonna do is he's gonna pretend this is a box or, or a wall here set up straight up and down. And he's gonna step up to where his foot is kind of equal to right here with like both my sides. Toe. Yeah, your toes are equal to both sides okay. there. Now, as he squats now, this physical object in the way, so his knees can't go past his toes. So let's see what a squat looks like when his, when his ankle is artificially limited. So let's see what that looks like. So ankle stops and he's kind of bent forward, his hips kind of shoot back, come back up. Now you might see powerlifters squatting pretty similar to that, right? And, and for them, it might be important to get those hips involved to move maximum amount of weight one time. But overall, we wanna make sure you can squat in different, different ways. So if he steps back now, just slightly to where this is not gonna be a physical obstruction anymore. Let's see what a squat looks like now. If he does the same thing, lets his knees kind of track forward. Now you can squat deeper and stay a little more upright. So having options when you squat is super, super important because if you keep doing everything one way, then your body can sometimes say, hey, that's too much. And a way it sometimes tells us that is stiffness and pain. So do you recommend everybody trying to get to a place where they do allow their knees to go over the toes? Absolutely. I, I want you to be able to get to a place that you can do that because you can't avoid it throughout your life. There's no way you're getting off of a low couch without letting your knees go past your toes. There's no way- Stairs. Exactly, climbing stairs, especially coming downstairs. There's no way you can do it. So if you can't avoid it, why not get better at it and train it. And so those are the things that we'd highly recommend trying out. And these are things that he has personally prescribed to me to work on whenever I'm dealing with certain issues that are related to my ankles. So I know firsthand that these can work if done correctly and done consistently. How often would you recommend doing each of these? So that first one, we're doing a foot mobility exercise. Two sets of 15, once or twice a day is a great way to start. Um, when we do the second exercise, it's just anytime after you do the foot mobility exercise, you can do the same thing. Okay. And then, and then that's, 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 the third one's just more of a test. Yeah, more of a test to show you what it kind of looks like. Okay, so try those out um, and let us know down in the comments uh, what you think about them. I, I, I truly believe this entire series, not just this video, this video can help, but 
So can the exercises that we've talked about for neck, for shoulders, for back, for, for hips, for knees, for everything. And so if you haven't checked out any of those videos, highly recommend going and checking those out. People have been absolutely loving this series, but for real, a massive thank you to you for leading us through this awesome series. Super informative, super educational. Hopefully everybody out there uh, enjoyed it. If you did, again, make sure you're smashing that thumbs up button below just to let us know. Um, but that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this series. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.